Monday morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Today everyone. is today is Monday, May fourteenth. Yeah. All and day, all day long. <laughs> and we want to say uh, a quick uh, Happy Mother's Day. Yes. Yes. Yesterday was yes. Mother's Day for everyone. So Happy Mother's Day out there to you all viewing and listening from Table for Five. Yes. This is Table for Five. Yes. Welcome. We have a full table today. Yes. This we is have great. A full table. Welcome to the show. Yes. <laughs> if you're wondering where you're at, what you're doing, you're watching Table for Five with Felicia and Annette. I'm Felicia. I'm Annette. And she's Annette. And uh, good morning and welcome to everyone. You, the listening and the viewing audience here at Table for Five, will always have a seat here at this table with us and all of our guests. And like Annette mentioned, we have a full table today. Yes, welcome, I love everyone. It when we do. I know, right? Yes. Woo-hoo. Good morning. We're going to have some great conversation. Yes. So get ready. Yesterday You're was Mother's informed. Day. You were all around your mothers, or you were being celebrated as a mother. And so vaginas everywhere <laughs> and vaginas all day today <laughs> on this show. I just Woo-hoo. love it. I love it. I think everyone should love their vagina. Yes. I love mine. I, I don't know that I love mine. Oh, no, I think you should. It gave, it it's brought there. your children into the you world. You will after this. No, they cut it open. Well, I had cesareans. Okay. I did too. Yeah, so I guess mine didn't come through. But, <laughs> <laughs> but still, it ate it in it in some kind I know, of I know. I just, yeah, it's cool. I mean, I'm cool with it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, we are not taking live uh, call ins right. today, but you can join in and jump in on the conversation on Facebook Live yes. today. So if you have questions about the show or you have comments about the show, leave um, then leave them down below on yeah. the Facebook Live and we will we will or someone from their team will get to it we'll get you a professional answer because you <laughs> might get a ghetto answer from us so we want to keep the ghetto for that too the ghetto out of it and just <laughs> listen i'm not afraid i'm not afraid for, of anybody come for me no that's <laughs> right don't be cussing because last week you were oh, cussing yes. you were cussing and somebody on face was like why yes. is she cursing so much because i can yeah. I know, I know, but she, I guess her delicate ears were like, oh, what's well, up with that? I don't know, I'm sorry. But but whoever that was, I think her name was Tamika. Oh, you Hi, are Tamika. just like throwing her under the bus. Well, it's on there. It's on. <laughs> you, uh, she threw herself under the bus when she put her name and she called you out, like, right? Yeah. She did that. I didn't even she address did that. it. I guess I should address it. Should I address you it? You should have said, I didn't I mean to t- offend you. No. Stay I unoffended. No, <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's not I meant to. You can be offended if you want to. Like, but I'm not in the business of telling anybody how they should feel no, or how they should no, not No, I'm just saying. And I'm not going to apologize for what I do so she asked me why you got to curse so much one because I can and two because I wanted to bring across my frustration right and my irritation and so that's how that's you how that. I chose to do that so if you don't like it then no no keep listening like and watching it. no no <laughs> you but you don't have to like it but everybody don't have to like everything I know but that's the freedom of the internet where she can ask yes. that question that's yeah, all okay and obviously because she asked Hopefully a lot of I other answer, questions I, yeah I gave it to her I gave her the answer yeah so. well <laughs> That's yeah. okay. Even Warning. our guests, even our guests cu- cuss. cursed. Even Julie was oh, yeah, cursing. She, she? She, oh, heck yeah. That was the first thing out of her mouth with the first question. Oh. <laughs> that was the first thing out of her mouth. I guess I didn't realize it because, you know, my ears are so... <laughs> yeah, immune to, to it. it. Yes. yes. I think Heidi was like, oh, my pearls. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. I digress. Yes. So would you like to tell them where they can find Absolutely. us when we're not watching us When here? you're not, when we're not on LA Talk Radio on Mondays, you can catch us on our social media platforms on Instagram, Table for Five, on Twitter at Table for Five, on Facebook, Table for Five at Felicia and Annette, and our, our YouTube, Table for Five TV, and what I like to call our one-stop shop is our website, which is table dash four f o r dash five the number five dot com, and there you could get all our information. Got a pr- uh, past shows, historical shows, <laughs> back in the day, um, <laughs> and you can find out information about us. And if you want to advertise with us, there's a little uh, tab there that you just click on it and send an email, and someone very professional will contact you. Yes. It's not us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we pay people. For yeah, we pay be, people for that <laughs> to be professional. Exactly, because we're not. Yes, but today's show, I'm going to introduce our guests yes. so they can jump in. Today's show, um, I forgot exactly what we were calling it. <laughs> today's oh. show, 
Um, it was a really cute title, and now <laughs> it like <laughs> it slips your mind. Hold it on, hold slips on, hold on. my mind. Um, but we've got uh, two guests here, and we're like I said at the top of the show, we're going to be talking about vaginas today. So don't yes. let it scare you. I don't want you to run off. I don't want you to be like, oh my god, this is an X-rated or R-rated show. I no. got it. Okay. Uh, j- join the vagina revolution. Yes. Join Sustain the vagina. natural for a healthy vagina. Yes. So we're going to be talking to the uh, co-founder yes. um, of Sustain Natural. I'm going to do a little crowd applause here. Uh, Mika Hollander. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce your last name? And our uh, our guest, Kate Frazier. Welcome. Thank you. Give a little applause. <laughs> Thank you for joining us uh, this morning, ladies. I think this is a conversation that is a continuing, and, yeah. and I love that we called it a evolution, revolution, because I do feel mm-hmm. like we, the, our vaginas need to stay in a constant evolution yeah. of uh, just evolving and talking about the they different- They always evolve. Well, I they think do. Com- yeah. <laughs> they do, but conversations also need to yeah. evolve. Sure. And so I, we're gonna start that conversation for you guys here today, and hopefully you continue it on with some great, great information. Yes. And, I think and they have a website. Thing. We want to give out that out. And we're going to give it out now. We'll give it out later. It's www.sustainnatural.com, correct? Yeah. Good. Yes. www.sustainnatural.com. And it'll be on all of our platforms in our under the YouTube and in the link on the website. So you guys can click on that. And it'll be on our Facebook page as well. Yeah. And get all the information you're looking for after you hear what we, they have to say. Because yes. I haven't heard. You met them before. Yes. I missed it. So, yes, it's going to be a great I'll be like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> no, it'll be a great conversation. But before we jump into that, we're going to talk a little bit about some hot topics. Yes, we didn't get to them last week. Yes, because we had, we know, we, we wanted barely to get had Julie enough time. caught Hames her whole hour and we ran out of time. We went over, we went over a little I bit. I know, but that's but it okay because it. Yeah. it was such an amazing yeah. show. But um, you went to see a play. I did. It's called Mulatto Math. It was fantastic. Um, I just happened to get it through an email and I at this little playhouse that I had never been to, had never heard of, and parking was really bad. Um, The the Whithall Theater Mm -hmm. theater, um, in Sherman Oaks on Ventura Boulevard. Um, But it was great and it was like perfect timing because we, you know, we were getting ready to have Julie on the show and uh, it's about a young woman um, and she was a math major. She's very into mathematics and she is biracial. Her mom is Caucasian and her dad is black. And she, it was her story of how the equation of her has come about and evolved mm, throughout the years. Interesting. So it was funny. It was, it was, I say it was musical theater because she sang. So is that considered musical theater? Sure. <laughs> My sure, theater, you know, sure. connoisseur over here. I'm not. Wait a minute. A did, is she black? She's mixed. Like, okay, but what does she say? You know how Julie says, I'm black? R- oh, what does she identify? Yeah. Um, I think that she identified as black most of her life. Okay. I think. Yeah, I don't know if she actually, did she actually say? But it was interesting because the struggles that she had, and I think work like that she talked a lot about were stemmed from the fact that she didn't look like her mother Mm. so she was definitely um you know different looking than her mom she had different hair and we it's like it seems like we have this conversation about hair texture and hair goes back to hair because it's a huge thing and a lot of people don't understand and speaking of women it's part of our persona Mm -hmm. and who we are um it's it's something that you can change but not really you know it's kind of it is what, what it is when you are born with it it's not like clothes. Right. Well, I guess it kind of is. I mean, people chop it off and put wigs on and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, when you're younger, it is what it is. And right. so because she looks so different from her mother, it was very hard for her to feel figure out her place in the world and how mm. to walk in the world. And I understood that I got, I got that. Um, I didn't have the same experience because I feel like I looked like my mom, yeah. so I didn't have those issues. I wonder if that's more, because th- Julie said that last time mm-hmm. too. Her issues were her father was white. I mean, her mother was white, her mm-hmm. father was black, and her issue was she didn't look like her mother. So mm-hmm. I wonder if there's a bigger correlation when you don't look like your mother and you're in a biracial relationship yeah. that that really messes with you. When I think it's not for so a much girl. your dad. Yeah, I think yeah, it, exactly, if exactly. So it you're brought the daughter. up a great issue for me because for my sons, I mean, even though they are probably darker than me, well, they are darker than me, um, but they don't look like their father. Right, they're lighter so than was, their dad. Yes, and so it was 
very um yeah because i guess my older son looks just like his dad yeah <laughs> physically like they're Mark like twins yeah spit him out um <clears throat> but just different <clears throat> colors and different hair textures and stuff like that and so i had a conversation with him about it like i need you to be aware of this and understand and you know, so what do your kids grace. say they are um they say they're mixed okay yeah we just say mixed with everything um yeah and so but i wanted him to be aware of that i thought it was a really great thing for him to see mm -hmm. and for him to understand the boys went to the play no 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 my, oh. hus my husband did oh okay because okay. you know him in musical theater oh my <laughs> gosh <laughs> i love musical theater <laughs> so this counted as musical theater because she was singing, singing. jeez louise <laughs> yes anyway it's yes. not hamilton and then so, <laughs> <laughs> so speaking on to that we both saw mm -hmm. the Rachel Divide on Netflix. Anybody yeah. see that documentary? No, it's based yet. on the controversy of this woman, Rachel Dolezal. Dolezal. I think it's Do yeah, yeah. That. Dolezal. I think so. Um, when she was run, she was heading the NAACP and somewhere along the in line, Washington, Spokane, it, Washington. Yeah, Spokane, Washington. It came out that she was not black and she had been portraying herself as a black woman for I don't know five or nine years. Is this or whatever. that woman? It was like a couple years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. got really, yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it was a documentary. Yeah. 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 She so they just released it. They just released this documentary on Netflix. And so uh, someone had posted it on Instagram and said, oh, I don't know how to feel about this. And I was like, wait, oh, that's what this is about? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to watch it because when this happened, Felicia was like, oh, my God, I can't, <laughs> I can't stand her. Blah, blah, blah. She was on the hate train. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm on the hate train. I don't know. I didn't hate her. I just didn't hate her. Yeah. So after I got done watching that documentary, I was like, this is a bigger conversation because she took on a she took on an identity mm -hmm. that right. people were so offended by because right. one lady claimed you didn't walk in our shoes. Well then how do you say that to someone who's transgender? Yeah. And says, I'm a man yeah. or I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. So we say to that person you didn't walk in our shoes you can't be that you don't know what it feels like to give birth you don't know what it feels like to have a period you don't know what it feels like when your breasts are engorged like mm -hmm. you yeah. know what i'm saying like i was listening to this yeah. going hmm i give her a pass mm -hmm. she wants to be black she had a lot more black experience like when they gave the whole story i didn't right. realize she had right. four black siblings that were yeah. adopted in her family so it wasn't like yeah. all of a sudden she woke up and said i'm gonna be black today yeah mm -hmm. she was married to an african american american man yeah. um had a son she had a <laughs> son with him um then she, she later had, adopted her youngest uh, brother. right so i just mm -hmm. didn't understand i thought people were misinformed because I think yeah. that conversation today is much different yeah. than it was, I don't know how many years ago that happened. Mm -hmm. Much, much, much different. And right. I, I, I thought they crucified her. They didn't give her a pass on anything. Yeah. And she took on the identity of being a black woman. And I think they were mad because one of the ladies on the, on the reel said this to her. She goes, mm -hmm. I can't make myself white, mm -hmm. which you can. Yeah. You can. If you think about it and you have the right dermatologist, you Michael can Jackson did it. Yes, you can <laughs> certainly make yourself white. So that wasn't, I felt like they attacked her on that show. Yeah. It wasn't a fair and balanced conversation. Yeah, and maybe like, they didn't have all the information, though, because I feel like none of us had all of the information that came out in the documentary. I didn't. I definitely yeah. didn't. Yeah. I'm learning. Right. Yeah. But even still, the, the idea, if someone chooses and says, I've, I've, I identify as being mm -hmm. an African-American, who are you to say to me, no, you can't do yeah. that? No, I think that's a good point, and it's a bigger conversation because we are talking about transgendered and people changing and yes. feeling like they're different things. And so, yeah, I think people need to be less judgmental. judgmental. They were hating on that woman. Judgmental. Oh, my God. She had to literally and change critical. her name. Yes. No, I, was, yes. I remember. It yeah. was terrible. Yeah, and, um, and I think also, too, for those people who would say, oh, she didn't walk in our shoes and she, you know, this, but she, she is, yeah, <laughs> she is living her life Because right as now a black she's woman. getting ostracized like well, that. And even before though, people didn't know if they didn't know her right. story. I mean, outwardly she did look like a light skinned or mixed person yeah. and she was out there fighting for the rights of people, um, disenfranchised and people of color. And she, <laughs> and so to say that she, she didn't understand the experience, I find a little like, what? I mean, how can you say that? Because she is getting discriminated against and so I, that part is like right. well no you can't really to me you can't really use that as an argument to discredit her or right. to dislike her right and what i thought was interesting too was that they were saying that she was using her kids as props 
when they were like laying there and like you know she she tries to create this identity through her kids well she gets to do that because her son is black yeah she gets to say that's how the world is viewed her views her son right black. Yeah. so she gets to to fight for him she gets to stand up and say he's in danger i don't want my son to get shot i mean she gets to say that whether she's yeah. white or black or asian or whatever like i was so angry at the women in the show in the documentary that was so mad at her mm -hmm. because i said no 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 like you guys missed the whole point here yeah. like she had she had a narrative in her life she didn't make it up out of the blue there was something in her that she said i really feel like this is who i am yeah and for sure it, and i was just Listen, Rachel, we're trying to get you on the show. <laughs> yes, please. I was going to say, it's a bigger show. conversation. Yes. And I would love to have someone that does feel yes. um, like that. Yes. But, and, and to go delve further into the explanation. Why did you change? What changed your mind about her? Well, I didn't like her for those for those reasons, though. That's not what, what I had an issue with, why I took issue with her. My reason that I took issue with her was because I was like, okay, this chick is making it worse for someone like me that walks through the world because I'm never accepted. And so I was always questioned, am always questioned, especially in the black community because I'm not dark enough, your hair's not kinky enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough in either community. So I'm not white enough, I'm not this enough, I'm not but whatever. But I I, when I first met you, I thought you were white. I never questioned. Well, yeah, most people do, but there right. are instances where I have been in an environment and people will make racially charged jokes and I'll have to say to them you right. do know <laughs> right. that you know and they're like oh yeah you know but so it, it's my choice whether I choose to say that right. I, and I do have that advantage right. and so I think the advantages possibly that I have is what people get very angry at right. me for and I think that that's why they were mad at her too yes, because, because she could she undo can, the wig and be a white woman any yes, minute she, she wanted to and she could stop tanning and she can go mm -hmm. back into that other world and they feel very salty and you know mad because okay well I can't just do that I can't just jump from world to world to world but being able to jump from world to world to world is no picnic either. Right. I mean, because but I don't I even think she wanted to do that. Yeah, no, I don't think she did either. But so when I go back to my angst with her is that I'm like, OK, so now there's this person. So now people are really going to be looking at me sideways. So, yeah, it's just that's that's where my issue was with her. And we didn't have all of the information mm -hmm. we didn't have. It was very sensationalized. Yes. And yeah. I was still always like, OK, there's more to this story. Um, but my initial thing was like, oh, really, <laughs> really? <laughs> Like, you know, just yeah. stop. Yeah, I never I never was offended by her. I just was yeah. curious, like, why would she do that? Like, what led her to yeah. be this, to yeah. make that decision for herself? Because, I mean, I'm not a fan of Louis Farrakhan, but in the documentary, <laughs> he came out and said to the African-American community that he was speaking to, he said, she's doing what you guys want to undo. Mm -hmm. And she's walking around what the way that you guys don't want to walk around. Right. So he kind of threw it in their faces. And I thought, yeah, he's got a point. He's yeah. got a, a very valid point. Yeah. So it's an excellent documentary. Yes, if you want to have a out. real good conversation around the kitchen table, watch The Rachel Divide. Mm -hmm. And it'll be curious to see how that, you'll, you'll kind of, be enlightened and, mm. and uh, how it ends is very interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. And we wish her well and we would love I to have a conversation. I think she's in LA. I think she's in LA. Today. I think so too because she's, so. I'm, we're following her on Instagram. Yeah. So we're trying to get her. Yeah. We're, we're stalking Hi, her. If you watch, <laughs> it works. Yes. Yeah. Whatever works, Rachel. We're, we're harmless here. We just have opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Lots, of Lots, Lots of them. Lots of them. <laughs> So let's get into the, our show. Yeah. Yes, because I'm very excited. Would you like to do the introduction? Yes, as a matter of fact. Well, you know, Kate, I don't have an introduction for you. But you could tell folks after. You know, <laughs> for I'm sorry. Sure. That's, that's no our. Problem. That was on us. M uh, Mike. Mika. Mika. Mika Hollander is the co-founder and CEO at Sustain N Natural, the leading brand of all natural vagina friendly products. She's also the creator of Get On Top, a national campaign aimed at women uh, at getting women to control of their, oh my God, why can't I read? At getting women to take control of their sexual health. Mika received her MBA from NYU Stern School of Business, where she was the president of the Social Enterprise Association. Through Sustain 10% for Women Initiative, she is proud to, clo to work closely with Planned Parenthood and Women's Voices for the Earth. Mika has been listed on Forbes 30 Under 30, Fast company's most creative people and Inc. 30 under 30 and her second book get on top was just released march 2018 mm -hmm. please welcome mika and please welcome kate kate tell us a little bit about yourself so i am a customer of sustain oh but wow more importantly nice. i am very good friends with mika and i also 
have been working with the company since they launched four years ago, Ooh, kind of handling all of their media communications. Fantastic. So yeah. I have been talking about Woo. vaginas and sex for <laughs> several years That's now. That's awesome. Fantastic. We're Thank you. Yay. Welcome on. Welcome to our show. Thanks yes. for having us. Welcome. So Felicia, to be yes. full disclosure, Felicia met them on Monday, Monday. Mm-hmm. evening at a talk that you were having, correct? Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to make it, but um, so I p- might ask questions that she might know the answer That's to. Fine. So sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. It's I might be good. like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's all, and, and I feel like the first time that I saw you guys, I am not a customer. However, I will soon like to be. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> I was searching through for, um, you know, natural feminine products and stuff like that. And you this can get this stuff, you know, at the stores, Whole Foods and stuff like that. Um, but it was, I think I ran across your information. Maybe it was even on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So whatever you guys are doing yeah. is the advertising is good, is getting out there. Yeah. And what struck me that was different than your company was not only do you sell feminine products for our vaginas, but you also make condoms, which I thought was, oh my God, this is Brilliant. so fantastic. Because now I don't know if you guys are the only company out there, um, natural sustainable company that makes condoms or not. You can speak to that. Yeah. Um, but I thought that that was brilliant in in the idea of you know then once getting to know your company was this whole empowering of women Mm -hmm. and not just your your taking care of your feminine uh, body parts or taking hold of feminine products but also with sex too Mm -hmm. you know like taking back this idea of okay you know what this is going inside of me so here I'm gonna need you to put this on because I don't know what that is that you're putting on you and you should be concerned about that too but more importantly it's going inside of me so I need to feel good about it and that's not something that I ever thought about or that I like it ever clicked to me because I don't know I mean you're not putting a condom in you every day I guess I mean you would well depends depends speak for yourself (laughs) that's that's true let me stop I'm personally not but maybe people are but like with the with a tampon at least so however many days if you are an avid tampon user that's you know definitely going in yeah. there for a length so of time. So for for me, how did this come about? Where did this idea come from? Because you're so young. So I'm older than I look, but I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look yes. very young. Yes. So where did this whole idea come from? Like, were you sitting at home? Were you upset? Did an infection happen? Did you go, oh, this it would be better? <laughs> right. You know, like yeah. where did yeah. like something had to you know something? There's always a problem you have to fix, and you go, oh, this would be for the greater world. Yeah. Yes. yes. So thanks for mm-hmm. having me. Of course. Absolutely. Um yeah, so I it, it wasn't um like an infection or or a super personal experience, but and we started with the condoms. So for the oh, first Oh, that was your first product. Yeah, so oh, we've wow. been on the market for almost 4 years and we and we launched with the condoms. They're the most mm-hmm. sustainable condoms in the world. Um I can tell you more about that. And I actually started the company with my dad because okay. I'm sure everybody who's listening just dreams of starting a condom company. <laughs> you know, my I grew dad, up just what? like at the kitchen table being like, one day, <laughs> you and I starting a condom company. Um, oh my God. But so, you know, my family's been in the natural products business for 30 years. My dad founded Seventh Generation. And so in some ways, it's like the apple doesn't fall far mm. from the tree. You know, mm-hmm. he greened cleaning and household products and I decided to green sexual wellness and that's excellent. Uh, feminine care. Yes. But so yeah, so he had had this idea a long time ago. He thought it, you know, a fair trade sustainable condom was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And we both revisited the idea about 5 years ago and I thought it was interesting, um, but I didn't think it, that was enough. Like I thought, you know, having the most sustainable condom in the world was really cool, but there there had to be a bigger opportunity. Okay, can I ask you what makes it sustainable? Yeah, like what yeah. makes your condom different than any other condom that we can go out there? And and let's like be honest, you have to order this, right? You can or, buy it. You can also get it at Whole Foods. So, oh, you can. And, so and, and a bunch of other retailers. Yeah. Okay, so you are in. You are not just an online company. No, we. Okay. I mean, our main business is e-commerce, um, but we have retail distribution nationwide oh, okay good so, so we can find you out there on the stores don't be fooled and say oh i don't have to order that. yeah yeah, yeah. No. but also some people you know it's anyways it's not some people don't like going into the store right, and buying it for yeah. sure um we're gonna change that but <laughs> so we, so <laughs> yes. the most sustainable condom so right. basically what a lot of people don't, don't realize is that latex is the sap of the rubber tree mm-hmm. just like maple syrup is the sap of a maple mm-hmm. tree so to extract the latex you have to tap the rubber tree mm-hmm. so we 
we traveled around the world and looked at rubber plantations and we're sort of really disturbed to find that on most of these plantations there's a lot of child labor, there's a lot of harmful chemicals being used, and we found luckily the only fair trade certified rubber plantation in the world in India that makes latex for condoms. Wow. So what does that mean? There's no child labor, there's no harm for chemicals, workers are paid a fair wage. It was a really special, different place. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so the next part of it was, you know, how is the product getting manufactured? And what, what normally happens when you heat and mold, or what always happens when you heat and mold any latex product, is a chemical reaction forms in nitrosamines, which have been identified as a carcinogen, mm. form in the latex. Right. And then when the latex comes into contact with bodily fluid, the nitrosamines get released. Mm -hmm. um, super sexy stuff, I know. Yeah, wow. <laughs> so <Turn it> interestingly, <laughs> pacifiers, another right. you know another latex product that come into contact with bodily fluid. The FDA says there's a limit to the nitrosamine levels, but with condoms, they don't care. There's no level. You can have oh, as wow. many wow. nitrosamines. So it is limited on pacifiers, exactly. but not condoms. on condoms. So condoms and oh, wow. tampons, sort of crazily, something that goes inside one of yes, the most absorbent expensive. parts of our body, don't have to disclose their ingredients. Yes. Wow. Let's, so, let's st st pause for a moment. <laughs> and let's say that one more time. The FDA has not required for tampons or condoms to disclose what's in them. the ingredients or the yeah. products that's going into your body. That's a bigger subject because that <laughs> keeps what? you sick, keeps people employed. That's like a whole other. And but people thing. don't understand that because people will say, and I have had people say to me, "Well, why are you switching to organic? It's just a tampon. Yeah. It's just bleh, bleh, bleh. what." You have to stop and think about it and understand the whole scope of everything. You are not being protected that government or whoever you know that you think is looking out for you no. they're not they're not so continue. Well, and Sorry. i think in some you know they do in some ways right mm -hmm. so these are also medical devices so right. one condom can't be more effective than another they make sure that the condoms you know work, work. as good as they can work. They make sure tampons, a regular tampon from one brand, a regular tampon from another brand, absorb the same amount of liquid. So they're regulating in, in efficacy, but right. when it comes to the ingredients, there, there needs to be a lot more work around disclosure and ultimately mm -hmm. regulation and testing. Um, so the condoms, we felt really like we could completely reinvent the product. Now, are, do they feel different? Can I open No, them? I mean, they, yeah, they're... Open you know, the way that they feel different is really when you're using them. So okay. a lot of condoms on the market contain fragrances and spermicide mm -hmm. and this animal byproduct called casein. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of women actually, when they say, oh, I don't like to use condoms, it's not necessarily, yeah, it's tamper proof. Because yeah. you know, people go into <laughs> the stores oh, they and, they steal. Steal. Mm. and they try and get get a little that's smart i mean it's like good for you for using a condom but also right. like don't be know. stealing my product um now what about i'm gonna interrupt you real quick while she's yeah. opening that um what about people who are allergic to, to latex. latex or is it i want you to speak to about the the um other things that are inside it that maybe you think that you're allergic to latex but maybe it could be something exactly else. so so some people are allergic to latex. If right. you're allergic to latex, don't you? Our condoms have latex, so don't use them. But mm -hmm. a little bit. But if you're sensitive to latex, oh well, then you're allergic. Well, no. So there's, there's different. There, so some mm -hmm. people get a little like red, or and and that could be to, from the latex. That could be from the spermicide. It could be from a whole host of things. Right. What what causes an allergic reaction with latex is the protein level in the latex. Mm. So we've reduced mm -hmm. the protein level in the latex <laughs> by about 75%. Mm -hmm. So if you are just a little sensitive to latex and you use sustain, you might not experience any irritation. Mm -hmm. And it's lu is it lubricated? It's yeah, lubricated. It's lubricated. Inside oh, very and much out. so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very shiny, good. shiny fingers. Yeah. 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 Just get it all. <laughs> rub it's it very on moisturizing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I did. I, I did Home Shopping Network last year and I for the lube and I was like just for an hour like okay <laughs> just rubbing it in because you can't really like yeah. try it That's on yes. or like show Let's you, show how, you how this works we uh -huh. need a yeah banana. it was yes. just like yeah. <laughs> we don't have a banana or a cucumber exactly but yeah I want to feel it too go ahead Keep yeah going. So anyway, so, so I, yeah, you went ahead. from a condom and then what was your next product? So we started with the condoms and really what was so important about the condoms was 40% of condoms are purchased by women, which most people don't realize. Wow. wow. That is a, a bigger number than I That's thought. That's good. It's, yeah. Well, it's it's 40% of condoms are purchased by women, but 70% of those women feel really ashamed or uncomfortable when they're making the purchase. 
Mm-hmm. And 20, only 21% of single women that are sexually active use condoms regularly. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not good. That. So the statistics around unplanned pregnancy, mm-hmm. STDs, right. single people using condoms, I mean, we just saw a much bigger issue to address here. Yes, mm-hmm. have a sustainable condom. But more importantly, like, let's really change condom culture and re- really empower women to buy and carry condoms and right. hopefully slowly chip away at this sort of slut shaming that mm-hmm. happens usually with a woman who's carrying condoms usually that's a negative a negative connotation I think still in Sacramento (laughs) actually a woman can be arrested on suspicion of prostitution and the condoms in her purse are used as evidence against her I'm pretty sure what yeah that was a law in New York yeah yeah up until a few years ago you're that is insane wow like that would (laughs) piss me off (laughs) that doesn't even make sense that doesn't even make sense yeah well I mean Women the, are not the, supposed no. to be sexual. Yeah, no, but I mean, for the law, like when they say, okay, well, for prostitution, but to me, I don't think prostitutes are really using no, condoms. No, but right. that's even, that's, no, they, that's not even the point. Sex workers are actually pr- usually pretty good at using condoms. Are they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But if you're a sex worker and you're going to, because you arrest me because of the condoms, mm-hmm. like you make that correlation. Yeah. Like that that's doesn't awful. even make sense. Yeah. That would. It's Come on, New York. Come on. Don't let me down. Sacramento. <laughs> Oh, Sacramento. That's bringing it home. That's why I brought up Sacramento, because we're in L.A. Stop Sacramento. So there's all these... Is it the whole state of California then? No. It's just a city. It's a local... Yeah, it's a a city law. Ooh, Sacramento. You need to change that. Yeah, get up there. Go protest some stuff. So there's just like these... All these social sort of stigmas and Mm -hmm. taboos and all of this perpetuation around female sexuality that really inspired me to start the business. I love business and mm-hmm. I actually think that business can change the world more mm-hmm. than anything else for sure um, so that's so it's really a, a mission driven brand and then we have obviously products because we feel like the products are the solution right mm-hmm. so after the con- I'm sorry no I was gonna say I don't know I'm sure you guys have been in a condom aisle at a drugstore though it is mm-hmm. not pretty it's not for women I mean well, it's, it's not for anybody yeah, yeah. it's gross <laughs> crazy actually, packaging it's, and it's just not it's not it doesn't feel like it's about health. N- exactly. It feels I, like right. it's about they make it s- like pleasure, nasty. which is right. fine. Well, and I mean, it is right next to the tampons and sometimes, the pads. Sometimes. Some, oh, sometimes, true, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. They're chain- it they're, depends they've been where, making an like effort to Walgreens do that. And yeah. 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 what store you go into. It depends, because yeah. every store has it in a different location. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah, you got to ask. Uh, where are the condoms? Sometimes they're locked. And they're alarm yes, going off. Yes, they're just, locked. I've makes seen it a that. Lot more yes. <laughs> like, why are you locking this thing? Yeah. Up? Way to make someone feel comfortable. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like, why do you want to buy a condom? I just yeah. need. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I, but I do appreciate that and like that, and I'm, I'm happy to know that there are women that are buying them because I, as a young person, as a young Felicia, was not buying condoms. Listen, I'm that person that doesn't really like to go in even now to Target and buy my feminine products. Like, I will not go in and buy like here's a box of tampons and that's all I'm gonna. So do. where are you gonna go? Well, no, I just buy it with other stuff, and I like oh, oh, kind of oh. hide she, like, it. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, I'll be like, listen, I need these candy liners right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bleeding. Yes. Actually, well, I'm, I'm a, a woman. Little, this I'm, is what I'm happens. Getting this is, this is I'm this getting is a little better with it. I'm getting a little better with it as I've gotten listen, older. Listen, I've sent my I've husband kids. with a list. Yeah, my husband won't do it. Because yeah. he's like, you're ridiculous. What? But yeah, my husband, yeah, Mark is mean to me. Anyways, but yeah, no, but I'm better than I used to be. So, like, the thought or the idea of me buying and purchasing a condom i just would be like oh yeah no i don't think well I that's want to why do our that. online right. business is so sure it's been such a success because a lot of most women feel some mm-hmm. sort of discomfort or shame buying tampons mm-hmm. even not yeah. not mm-hmm. just condoms yeah. and lubricants wow. and so we want to change that yeah. and we, we want women you know five ten years from now and a lot of our customers already do feel very different than they Good. used to feel making these purchases but so you went from condoms to tampons Condoms to organic lube. Oh, okay. To yeah. vaginal after sex wipes, okay. post play wipes, and then to tampons, pads, and liners. That was last year, yeah. Okay. And now, why? Um, just going back to the condoms real quick <laughs> to kind of wrap it up and put yeah. a bow on it. Wrap it up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, we're not calling them organic, they're just uh, fair trade. Fair trade, um, and vegan, nitrose mean free. There's okay. no current way to certify condoms organically. Right. But you've taken out as much as you can to make them harmful. In there's your, nothing. Har- har- yeah. So there's, you know, there's, you can't make claims anymore, mm-hmm. about, like non-toxic, right? Mm-hmm. Water can be toxic. Mm-hmm. Right. But what we, 
it's all about for us what's not in it and the being transparent. We operate right. under what we call the precautionary, not what we call, what's called the precautionary right. principle. We don't want to put stuff on the market that hasn't been proven to be safe. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most brands, big brands, put stuff out and then, oh, two years later, you know, Johnson & Johnson baby powder. Oh, yeah. Like, it has to be recalled. Major oh, lawsuit. Like, oh, wait, they we just didn't paid realize out. for 40 years we were putting something out that was causing cancer, cancer. because we didn't Huge test it payout. in advance. Yes. yes. And so is there testing being done now? Are you seeing that there's t testing being done? There's no, still there no. has still never been one long-term study looking at the ingredients what? in tampons and pads on women's bodies. Mm -hmm. The government, there's a, there's a bill that we've been lobbying for to get funding for this type of test. Mm -hmm. But currently, there hasn't been a lot of research. There's some newer ongoing research from nonprofits looking at, you know, glyphosate. So I'm, I don't know, in Monsanto, some people might be familiar with this case. Mm -hmm. But cotton is harvested with a pesticide called mm -hmm. glyphosate. Cotton's mm -hmm. like one of the dirtiest crops. Right. And it's not something we think about because it's soft and it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. in so many it's things. And we wear it. And, and like, I'm probably wearing, I don't know what I'm wearing right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's what is mixed into m most of all tampons, not organic cotton, just right. regular cotton. Right. And cotton is always treated with glyphosate. Glyphosate's a known carcinogen, mm -hmm. and it can end up in trace amounts in tampons. And you know, the FDA says it's not harmful. It's it's such a trace amount, if ever. And the EPA says something totally different. And it's like, you know, mm -hmm. women use eleven to twelve thousand of these tampons in their lifetime like wow, no one lot. has really mm -hmm. stepped up and said I mean we're trying to but no one you know high enough up has sort of right. said listen until we know that it's safe to have trace amounts of glyphosate in tampons and the FDA will argue with me because they think that it is safe but it's it's like if you have two different bodies of government arguing against each other mm -hmm. for me it's about like go for the brands that are actively a disclosing yeah. their ingredients and who are not using any ingredient that's been questioned by anybody yeah and err on the side of caution i mean mm -hmm. why, why not let's just err on the side of caution and now there's so many options you know this isn't right. 20 years ago even 10 right. years ago right. there's there's brands they're accessible and it's just i feel like women are really starting to question what they're putting, putting in, in on and yes. anywhere near their vagina. Yeah. Sure. And it's awesome to watch. Right. Yeah. So you have these products. They're natural. Mm -hmm. Would you say natural? Or yeah, organic. Most of them are organic. So have, how did you get people to become aware of it? Like, what was your... Yeah. I mean, it's I, it's been sort of a mix of, you know, when we started 7th Generation, and my, when my dad did 30 years ago, he was really ahead of his time, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody was thinking mm -hmm. about green products and right, clean right. products. And now they're everywhere. They're mm -hmm. everywhere. And so for us, it's been a, you know, yes, it's education. But we I always say, like, you know, treat your vagina better than your face. Mm -hmm. We're all starting to hear avoid <laughs> yes. glycerin, avoid parabens, avoid right. in your skincare. Yes. And so it's kind of easy because we get to say, yeah, you should avoid that in your lube. Yeah. You should avoid that in your tampon. You should yeah. avoid you know anywhere that's going inside of you so mm -hmm. it hasn't been as it's still education but mm -hmm. it's not as hard as it used to be people are right. people get it for us it's the harder part is changing the stigma around mm. just a woman who's sexually active mm. have you ever have you been able to correlate the way we've used tampons tampons um, with any kind of cancer cervical we cancer don't, we haven't or, yet done our own no. research on that no. So there's nowhere that they can correlate, say, you know, after using this many years of there's tampons. No, because no, yeah. they haven't looked at it. Oh, over wow. That's time. incredible. Yeah. So we that needs to be started. Yeah. I mean, that, I, that so would well, make a, sense. There's a bill that there's a bill um, by, I think, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Maloney. Or Grace Meng. And Gr well, Grace Meng's for the disclosure. And oh, yeah. right. But yeah, there, you know, it's hard though, right? The government's yeah. a shit show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like, I was in D.C., were you there? Mm -mm. I don't know. But we, we, last May, and we were lobbying for these two bills, but it's tough, right? Like, yeah. they were yeah. worried about Obamacare being repealed, yeah. and I'm showing up like, yeah. let's disclose tampon ingredients. And yeah. they're like, that's nice, yeah. sweetie, but like, we've got other problems we'll right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, because so, that would be interesting to know, you know? So then what sets you, I'm going to, you know, ask you a little tough question. What sets your company apart? Because you're not the only organic tampon online no, company no. out there um what sets you apart from all the rest and will you be coming out with more products yes 
two questions. So, I mean, one of the things that really sets us apart is just this comprehensive, like, portfolio of products. You know, we're not just an organic con tampon subscription. We make basically everything you need or a lot of what you right. need for your sexual and reproductive health. We also do, our tampons have a bioplastic applicator, so it's 90% plant-based versus mm -hmm. a petroleum-based plastic, which mm -hmm. is what all those other online brands are using. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it is a bit more sustainable than what's out there. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, and maybe Kate can answer this too, because I don't like talking about myself, <laughs> but um, we are much bigger than just selling products. Like mm -hmm. we are taking it upon ourselves to create change in Washington, to create change through education with right. the book, obviously, and and everything we do from a content standpoint. I I'm you know that's the stuff that gets me up mm -hmm. in the morning, and I yeah. and I do feel some of the other brands, you know, they're starting to realize that they need to stand for something. We've been right. standing for something since day one yeah. from the beginning, so and you, I want to change the whole conversation around sexual yeah. health not yes. just sell my tampons. so your goal is awareness too you're like I yes. you're Co it's, a, it's a conversation yeah. of yes. this there's an awareness now this there's these products yeah but let me tell you why you need these products because people yes. are like oh it's just another product it's my coochie who cares yeah. whatever yeah. but you should but if you're eating if organic you're getting, foods yeah but people are not eating organic foods yet like not the way we think they well, should be. Well, but the people who are eating organic foods probably may or may not be doing organic tampons. Right. So they, if you're they haven't do that, done the whole. Yeah. We had a, we realized when we launched our tampons. This is sort of crazy. We had tons and tons of condom and lubricant, organic lubricant customers who were using regular mm -hmm. tampons, and mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, that's funny. <laughs> like in my mind, tampon comes before lube when mm -hmm, you're like mm -hmm. switching out your cabinet. Yeah. But they hadn't, you know, they found sustain. Oh, I don't need that right now. Yeah, <laughs> they found us and they loved our products, uh, our sexual health products, and then I was like, we did all this research, and I was like, so surprised. I thought wow. these were the people using organic content. Right. Yeah. But what do you think's different? I mean, I feel like you're you know, on the front lines with me, <laughs> <laughs> telling people. I, being involved in communicating with the media and seeing how other brands operate, so many brands are kind of using these social responsibility tactics to mm -hmm. to kind of be a marketing push, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's kind of transparent. You can see kind of right through it after mm -hmm. you've been in the space for a while and see mm -hmm. how people mm -hmm. operate. But, you know, with Sustain, and I'm not just saying this, but, you know, their 10% for Women Fund, they started that from day one, yeah, that's where they fantastic. give 10% of their pre-tax profits to organizations like Planned Parenthood. You know, Mika is not going to D.C. and getting paid to do what she's doing. She's right. you, you doing that right. on her own free time, you know? Right. And she's incredibly busy, you know, building this brand. And so right. the fact that she's on the front lines and rallying and really educating people mm -hmm. and explaining these issues beyond the brand sure. is, is really what's important mm -hmm. and really what moves the needle and what you really need to look for when you're supporting brands. Yeah. Absolutely. And some... And, uh, I have to just vent a little bit. Like something that really surprised me and kind of upset me um, a few weeks ago is another brand was, tr you know, trying to launch um, some <coughs> sex products in addition to what they were doing, or I guess they launched them and and they were promoting, talking about how many people you've slept with and like oh. surveying their <laughs> customers. And I was like, that's oh. so it's so interesting. Like where why who cares like yeah. for me it's like if you're safe sleep with whoever you want yeah. whenever you want there? yeah and i was so sad because i felt yeah. like they're perpetuating everything that we've been trying, trying to, to change right. yeah. and they're supposed to be you know they're 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 young women too yeah. and i was just i was like okay oh shit like yeah. i don't want new company like okay great the big ones who've been around for decades like i'm not going to change them right, right. yet but with these newer <laughs> brands, it. I just was like, how, like, why? Like, yeah. this is, this is the yeah. opposite. Like, we want liberation. We want right. equality in the bedroom. Like, why can a guy sleep with, th if you're going to poll people, poll both. Pull, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And show that it's the same number. So they were just polling the women. And I just was yeah. like, mm -hmm. ugh, what a, what a mess. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You so let's talk it. about the book. How did the book come about? Yes, the yes, evolution the of the, oh, <laughs> what, what, one quick question before we jump to the book. Um, your tampons are not, do you have cardboard applicators? No, we I don't, don't think so. We and don't why? Yet. Is there so a we reason have, for that? Yeah, so cardboard ca cardboard applicators are um, more sustainable than even our bioplastic, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's just a really, it's important, but we're introducing products later this year um, that have a, 
better reception and are more sustainable okay. than um, our current products in some ways. But people the, just like plastic too. The cardboard, yeah. much <laughs> cardboard. Yeah. I grew yeah. up with cardboard. Listen, yeah. I've been putting cardboard in forever. Yeah. So I find it totally comfortable. But we did a bunch of research. I mean, people don't want to use it, and so I'm like, okay, well, yeah. I'd rather get more people using right. organic plastic cotton and the bioplastic right. than just have a really small, tiny little business right. and not be yeah. impacting. Or more what about people. the ones without the, any kind of applicator? Applicator Listen, free. That is for like some hardcore, really knowing your vagina kind yeah. of person. Because it's I so funny because you know globally, it's a much bigger and more popular than an applicator. Really, mm -hmm. globally, it's like everybody's using the digital either pads or the digital tampons. What's a digital? What's a digital? Oh, oh no, a digit. Oh, a digit. <laughs> <laughs> a digital. We are old. Yeah. <laughs> but but like there's certain companies like OB. Yeah. They have been around forever yeah. with that no applicator kind of situation. And I don't understand how all those women would put them in. I think I've done it. I don't mind it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it, I think I it's I a cultural do. thing. You know, it's in Europe, cult. people, that's just well, what people is, do. Really? This, it okay. goes back to America and our sort of society around sex and touching ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there's. Mm -hmm. Mm. We women are not ra like men are raised to like handle themselves all the right. time and touching themselves and exploring and women are like not Don't supposed touch. to yes. touch. Yes. It's yes. off limits. So then it makes sense. Then yeah. why would anybody want not want to use an applicator? Right. Yeah. Which leads us into yes. the reason for this book. So go ahead. Um, your plight. Yeah. Tell us why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us why you felt the need to write it and yeah. then the story on how you were able to get it done. So yeah, it's sort of, it's been a long time coming in some ways and in other ways I feel like I just like sneezed and the book came out because <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't like I had to think really hard about like, what do I want to write about? Right. It was, you know, I've been working on this business, Sustain Natural for five years and I've talked to thousands of women in person and then even mm -hmm. more online mm -hmm. over the last five years. And I've just, people just keep coming to me with any question, fertility, right? periods, sex, birth control, vir virgins who are thinking about having sex. I mean, mm. I get these emails and these call, like, it's just, and it's great. And I was like, sometimes I'm like, fuck, that's a really hard question. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I can't answer that. Yeah. You know, either go talk to an OBGYN, right, right. go use a resource. What What is the age range of these people that are coming you know, to you and asking you, can you tell? to 45, oh no, 70. We have people, yeah. we have customers, a lot of customers who are newly divorced, who are getting back out there. They've mm -hmm. never used a condom in their life. Mm, interesting. They're looking for lube. They're lo I mean, we have an amazing range of women who are using our products. And so... Women going through menopause. Yeah. They yeah. have yeah. dryness. Lube. They need we had, lube. We had a customer, yeah. actually. <laughs> Judy. <laughs> Judy from Florida wrote a song about our lubricant. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. Wrote and performed it. <laughs> Yay, Judy. <laughs> yeah, Judy's awesome. You made her happy. We did. Her <laughs> loins. Um, Listen, when everything is working, you have no you choice. You gotta sing a song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's so, so it's like, this is what's happening, right? Like our customer experience team is just like awesome women That's who great. just talk about sex all day yeah. Yeah. with our customers. And anyways, so I was getting all these questions and some of them are hard to answer and I, I'm like, either I can't do it or it's really have to think about it. Yeah. And others were really straightforward. I would say the majority of the questions that we get are pretty straightforward. You know, mm -hmm. how does birth control work? Mm -hmm. Or like, mm -hmm. is it normal that I'm getting my period, you know, spotting? And Or is it like, it's painful to have sex. Why? Right. What should I do? Mm -hmm. um, and so I just was like, we need a, we need a resource. Like, yeah. I have... Yeah. I ha we can ha we can get the answers that we don't have. I can provide the answers that I do have and I just want to create a sex positive guide to sexual and reproductive health. Mm -hmm. And we partnered a few years ago with Tumblr and this was another sort of evolution in this where we basically did like an ask me anything. So mm -hmm. we had, you know, women and men could submit questions about anything about sexual health. And we got, you know, I think 10,000 questions or something wow. on the first day. Good. And it was more than they'd ever seen with any type of program they'd done similarly and on any topic. Mm -hmm. And again, very straightforward questions. Some out there, but yeah. some really straightforward. And some sort of like, f fuck, we need it. Like, is masturbating cheating? Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. no. Um, but, but okay, like, let's talk about that. Yeah. So... It just sort of on and on and on. And then I sat down with my co-author probably about two, a little less than two years ago. And 
I was like, this isn't going to be like this is this is easy. Like we we know what we need to do. We mm-hmm. we've gotten years of questions that we just want to answer, mm-hmm. and we wrote a proposal super quickly, and then the election happened, <laughs> um, which sort of. Well, let's not go down that road. (laughs) But it really created, I was a little, I was like, am I going to sell this book? You know, Mm -hmm. I'd never, I'd been part of a book previously, but I'd never like sold my own book. Mm -hmm. Um, And I didn't, I didn't know how, how, what kind of publisher is going to write the sex book. Yeah. And we went in um, to meet with my publisher, um, now Touchstone, about like a few months after we worked on the proposal and we just sat down and they were just like we're gonna buy this book we're just Mm. gonna tell you right now this is critical yeah and the election definitely like oh like the election the pussy hat the women's Mm -hmm. you know it was like people were like yeah shit like let's put and it's amazing actually you look at the books coming out now my book cecile richard's book like i'm just gonna throw us in the same camp (laughs) (laughs) publisher (laughs) um and you see these books coming out and it's like Every obviously all those books right. got bought right at sure. that time, and yes. everyone was like, "There is such a, a need, need for this content." Yes. Um, so what? What? Yeah. I haven't read the book. Sorry, That's okay. but I will because yes. I just got it signed. Yes. So what? What do we find in the book? What's in the book? What information is it? Just a Q and A? What is it? It's a, there are some there's some Q and A. I mean, it's it's really about starts out with why I wrote this book, and then mm-hmm. it moves into just it's a real resource guide. Mm, I mean, right. listen. I have people who are like, I can't stop reading it. I can't sleep. Like, wow. and I'm like, awesome. Like, or not, good, you know, good. or you pick it up and you look at. I've never masturbated before. Like, where right. do I start? Yes. So, did you have doctors that you yes. tapped mm-hmm. into yes. and said, okay, this is the lady asked about this condition? Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a medical background? No. Do you have anybody in your family with a medical background? I I, I do come from a family of doctors, right? But you know, anesthesiologists. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Just hey, to be transparent, we love it's not anesthesiologists. Really. <laughs> no, but we I we had them. multiple OBGYNs. Right, right. My yeah, them. my dream yes. now is to like go. I right, well, get, like, a medical and the reason <laughs> right no. The reason I ask is with all the products, and you have to have knowledge of your vagina. You have right. to like all that knowledge. Did you research it yourself, or I had so my co-author and I? Yes, yeah, she led a lot of the research. Um, we had multiple OBGYNs we were consulting with. Okay. We had them mm-hmm. reading, you know, reading the whole book. But even mm-hmm. for the pro- development of product, how did you we've go about worked, that? We've worked with doctors, chemists. Um, you know, the former head of R&D from Direct consulted with us for the condoms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I didn't like pop out of the womb being like, <laughs> I'm going to make condoms. Because yeah. that takes time. Yes. Oh, you know, that takes time year, and years. research yeah. and yes. knowledge and understanding the human, the yes. body, the physiology of and the vagina. And you want that. You want someone yeah. that's going to put in that time and that research mm-hmm. um, to, to make this product. So I want to go back to the book real quick um, just to like, read off some of the chapters that I think are very interesting and very good. <laughs> Chapter one, getting to know your vagina. You think it's like so basic, but I feel like this is a good basic, <laughs> like back to basics. Back um, to basics. Uh, it's like the, wait, guy the sec- there was a whole episode of Sex in the City about uh, <laughs> the, the real prissy one, I forget her name. Charlotte. Charlotte yeah. didn't look at, ha- would never uh, yeah, look at her vagina. vagina. Yeah, yes. and that they had a whole episode on that. Yes, it was hysterical. Be- because I do believe that there is generations of people out there that have been brought up and I want to ho- talk about this whole like masturbation part too. Um, how and why to protect yourself. Like again, these you, you think that they're very basic things that people should know, but a lot of people aren't talking about it. They're not, um, you know. And then let's talk about sex. So I think it's a. It, I haven't read it yet either, but I think it's going to be a really great guide. And I think that um, I I told my sister that I'm going to send her. <laughs> A copy. She's got my niece is young and my sister, and I want all of us to read it together. Right. And kind but of have let me ask you: discussion. Would also you recommend no it? sex ed in, in many schools? Exactly. Right. I mean, a they lot of states yeah, don't, don't talk even about it. Require many, it. Fifteen exactly. states require abstinence only education. Oh, huh. how many states? Thirteen. Thirteen of the Pretty fifty. Yeah. Really? I'd like to know where those states are. Wow. It's, it's abstinence <laughs> only. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. Yeah. But I, it's another combo. would you recommend that for boys? Because I have sons. Yeah, I mean, I think it's for everybody. Mm-hmm. I, obviously, yeah. it's not my ob- I my target audience, right. but right. but they. I but think why they, not? Yeah. I mean, I think it's. We were talking about this the other night. Like, we can do a lot, and 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 I think Sustain is doing an amazing job at moving the needle on a lot of these conversations and a lot of these issues. But it really starts with how we raise our boys mm-hmm. and our girls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you think Empowering about like both. how do you change 
a 45 year old man <laughs> from thinking about thinking that a woman who carries a condom is a slut like that's yeah, not right. that's you can you can talk to them about why it's responsible but like right. if that's how they were raised like right. and that's, that's 45 and years that, of it's ooh. really hard it, it and it, i think we're the me too movement i think the conversations are starting to change but it's it's going to be the next generation mm-hmm. where we're going to see hopefully yeah. mm-hmm. a really big step forward Shift, yeah. mm-hmm. and i and i feel i believe this having boys and raising boys that i it's my responsibility mm-hmm. as yes. a woman yeah. you know i thought oh i'm going to have boys how am i going to be connected but i realized it was it's a almost a bigger mm-hmm. thing a bigger task that i have Hard. because I'm going to now not only, like, if I had a daughter, I'd be, you know, teaching her how to be the best woman she could be and independent and, you know, all this other. But now I have to do it. I have to do it for them, not only for themselves, but I also have to make them understand that there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you want an empowered woman. You want to be around someone that loves herself just like you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that, I think, is my job, the greater good, for that to really help them understand everything that they can about women yeah and you know it brings up it makes me think of this issue about porn and how a lot of a lot of (laughs) young boys are not getting information or they're not seeing how sex works by on tv or in books you know and so they're looking to porn yes and when they watch porn they think oh this must all these things happening must be normal and that's how girls want to be treated and that's how i should treat them and and with the internet yeah it, it has got you yeah, know, it's given us control. great stuff, but also bad stuff because back in the day, you would just like masturbate or boys would find their their dad's magazines. Mm-hmm. It was right. just an image, a picture, and I mean that's kind of damaging too because those women are like not real. But anyways, um, <laughs> uh, but now it's a whole like visual, and then they have that. You're right; they have this whole like scenario played out. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. like generally completely false and it's unreal. A, yeah. mm-hmm. So how do you, I mean, it's our responsibility then. How do we combat this? Right. How? What's been the response to the book? It's been amazing. It's been amazing. I mean, I think it was, you know, it, for the brand, it was like needed. Mm-hmm. And we, again, like to create real change, like it was sort of we really now put a stake in the ground of like we want to change the conversation and be a yes. resource for sexual health and reproductive health education. Um, But it's been, I mean, it's amazing. It's so hard to to sort of quantify, but through the brand and really through the book too, it's like, it's sort of hard to believe, but it's really these women who are writing to me and messaging me on social Mm -hmm. media every day, tons and tons of women, like Mm -hmm. sharing their stories, getting their, like just asking questions or just saying how we changed, I mean, literally changed their life. It's why I can like, you know, mm-hmm. work my ass right. off and why I love to do what I do. And I think I think our team feels it's sort of like a really special thing for people to come to work and feel like You're they're changing something. the world. Yeah. Yeah. What Even is just biggest... talking to one person, you know? Yeah. yeah. One one of our customer service people, you know, they get on they get on the phone with these people and they mm-hmm. offer them advice and they answer their questions. And wow. like mm-hmm. that person is so grateful to have that conversation. That's... So when you're training your customer service people, are you part of their training is listen you need to be aware and be sensitive oh, and yeah. understand oh, yeah. it's and, not and, just and really um you need to be thoughtful and you need to listen and you need to never express judgment mm-hmm. um it's a it's really it's actually been it's our strongest team um and it's been our hardest team to grow mm-hmm. just because we have a lot of people yes. who come to us who are like i'm so passionate but like you have to have really specific yeah. sort of character <laughs> and personality traits First of all, you have to be passionate, but sure. also where you can really, you know, you're whether you're f- acting like somebody's friend and just listening, mm-hmm. or you have to answer like really detailed questions that other people might squirm about. So, mm-hmm. what in all your research and, yeah. and writing, what has been the biggest misconception about the vagina? Uh, there's so many. <laughs> I mean, my two, two. my my biggest, and I don't know if it's a misconception. I was just answering some misconceptions yesterday, but. This, like, I don't know, for me, just this importance of masturbation and Mm -hmm. figuring out what you like and what feels good is something that we just don't talk about. Mm -hmm. And I think we unfortunately have a world in which to, if you're in a hetero relationship, a man and a woman enter a bedroom and a man expects something totally different Mm -hmm. in terms of outcome Mm -hmm. than the woman, right? Mm -hmm. Women are trained to just go in there, make the guy happy, and if, 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 they feel good too. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so that's been the biggest <laughs> perception yeah. that you Woo-hoo! shouldn't 
that you sh- that you should accept that. Right. Like that is the misconception. The reality is you sh- you first of all need to figure out with yourself what you like and what you don't like mm-hmm. because you can't expect the guy to me- read your mind right. exactly. and every woman's different. Exactly, exactly. And and also too do you f- ha- in talking to people do you find it's a generational thing because I know you talked a little bit about your story about how you guys taught you were a very open family and talked about it and your parents have been in making tampons and products and stuff so it's kind of an open conversation right. yeah. but that's ve- it's not the norm did no. when did you realize that that was not normal for everyone like oh everybody isn't talking about this because I didn't grow up I mean especially if people who maybe being a religious family Mm -hmm. religious or cultural you don't talk about those Mm -hmm. things and it's very minimal the sex talk or even around periods I'm I'm astounded by people who don't have conversations with their girls I don't think it's religious only because people don't talk about menopause I'm going through menopause and I try to have conversations Just women's health they just don't want to talk about it I'm like no let's have this talk let's oh no 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 I don't want to talk about like Why? this is very real what's happening to your body like yeah. let's Menopause, have this conversation pregnancy, postpartum yeah. sex yeah. period postpartum is a big one women's too. Yeah. health has just been neglected yes sort of like yes. it has a stigma on it it yeah. really does like we like shouldn't we complain. shouldn't be worried about yes it. exactly yes. why are you worried about that mm-hmm. just make some babies lay down have some sex yeah. make him happy <laughs> make some babies and keep it moving yeah. mm-hmm. what yeah. and no one for many many years no one has told us well i don't know maybe in the 70s 60s 70s when Sexual feminism revolution. you know became but i feel like even that era is kind of like gone down like those people yeah. have become silent and you know the 80s and 90s we weren't really talking about it like we were i don't know for it, AIDS. We yeah yes. it. it was yes. all just about yeah, yeah. it wasn't and yeah. being you know yes you're right it was just about protecting and yeah. protecting against disease and stuff like that but yeah, I think we need to go back. I think we need to go back and start having well, these bigger conversations. I think no, I don't know if we go back. I think we're moving forward because I think the Me Too pussy hat thing, but I mean, has <laughs> pick pick up those feminists. Like I need those people that were like active in the '60s and '70s. I need you guys to to raise up and have a bigger voice. Yeah, and I come back that, and to I the think table. It's, I think it's changing a lot. I yeah. mean, I the hardest th- the the moment where I realized this was going to be really hard, and and that the world was a very different place in terms of open conversations about Mm -hmm. sex was not until starting Sustain. I mean, Mm. I I always make this analogy because it's so true. I was treated like a drug dealer until, you know, a couple years in because people really, Really? some people were really offended about what I was doing. Like a young woman talking openly about sex, selling condoms, condoms are like bad adult products, porn, drugs, like, you know, off limits. And that was really hard. And that was when I realized yeah. how much work we had to do. What kept you going? What made you say, oh, I don't want to have to deal with this. I don't, this is too much. I didn't, I didn't take this on. I mean, I, I really believe that without challenge, nothing changes. Yeah, and I grew absolutely. up in a home of sort of activist mm-hmm. business leaders. And so I, I, how boring to do something where you don't face controversy yeah, right. for me that's my opinion some right, people yeah. don't want that but like for me that's that's what actually powers me through yeah bravo isn't that bravo great to you. yes so Love we it. have a feminist right here yeah right here. Yes. hopefully yes. We're all feminists. yeah we're all yeah yes. Yes. but i want the <laughs> but you're I want doing the it with the condoms to, to come back because i feel like our generation our age is the ones now that are having the people to that pick are, it up that well that we're raising the next generation yeah. so i don't want this next generation to continue on with the same stigmas that i had mm-hmm. you know i don't i don't want that you know and maybe my generation because of the previous generation the feminists they did maybe a better job than like say you know my mom or whatever but i, I feel like like, I, we need that power. We need to, yeah. to continue on that conversation, and we really have to get it with get it right with. And our I think kids. we will. I think I really see a sh- very strong silver lining in this election. Um, as really? traumatized, yeah, you because so well, because <laughs> listen, the well, Me I'm Too done. stuff, the I sexual harassment yeah, no, stuff. This was yes. all happening. Yeah. This is not. This is didn't this just didn't start a right. year and a half ago when he got elected? Right. Like, yeah. right. listen, I loved Obama more than anything, but this. This stuff was going on, and yeah. we needed something yeah. bad and traumatic to happen right. where our president is, like, saying it's okay to sexually harass women. We needed that to happen so that people could really be like, holy shit, yeah. like, my no, rights I, are being threatened. Yeah. I always said that we were in a love yes. affair with Barack Obama yeah. for eight years. We were so enamored. I mean, yeah. we loved him. We were, like, having this incredible love affair, yeah. and then all yeah. of a right. sudden 
there's a mistress and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. And everybody woke up and said, what? No. <laughs> da, da, da. And so it, like, it, this is what's happened. Like, I think, I yeah. feel like we've uh, woken up. Like, yeah. we're like, wait, what, 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 what? This has been going on the whole time that I've been loving you? <laughs> there's been a mistress? Like, I, you know, it's just, so yeah, I get that there's a yeah. silver lining where people yeah. have to, you know, yeah. wake up and be, be a part of what's going on in the yeah. world and back somebody up. Yeah. Well, bravo yeah. to you for not giving up and yes. for being, and, you know, persevering and going through and creating these amazing Congratulations, yes. Yeah, I can't wait to see what amazing things you do in the future and what more. You have to get, get these to in the schools. That's what I think yeah. about. That's yeah. really important yeah. for young girls. Well, I and think young everybody boys. that's and out this there should that be have young people in, in their life, they got to go buy this exactly. book. Exactly. This yeah. should be at like a sex ed in schools. That's really important. Because yeah. um, there was a school that was on TV and they had. Uh, baskets in the girls' bathroom, and then mm. were just condoms in there. Mm. And I'm thinking, that's okay, fun. well, that's cool. But, but now that you say that about the condoms, I'm like, well, let's put the right condoms in there. You Some know, schools right. don't even have tampons. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's a whole other <laughs> issue. Like, we need to have you back what? and talk about that because, well, and why do we get charged for feminine products? Oh, the yeah, tag. the, oh, tags. the tags. Yes. The tampon yeah. tag. Or even like in the bathroom, why do we have to pay for that? Why can't you just supply you yeah. supply Prisons. toilet paper? Prisons. I mean, toilet paper is free. Why can't I have free tampons? Yeah. Because you know? I don't oh. always have a quarter or something like that, you know, in my yeah, bag. That's and a I'm little crazy. The, you know, it's sad. It's we we have to change. Yeah. And I think you are doing the right thing. I think you're on the yes, forefront absolutely. of it. Absolutely, this You're is doing it the right way. She's yes. with me. Yes. Yeah, you My have an awesome guys. team. Yes. yes, bravo to you for being young and standing up and not being afraid. Yes. to to have a voice and to show your Thank voice you. and say we want to change this. You, you know, can do someone, it. I heard someone say it. on a show. I can't. Re- it doesn't. It skips me. It, 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 I don't remember, but they said that our future looks great. Mm. As as. Uh, we're in a situation right now where today mm-hmm. it looks grim, but our future actually looks good because we have women like these two and women like us that will be like, no, we're not going to keep our mouths shut. Give yeah. us a microphone. We're going to say yes. something out loud all day and long. we're going to cuss and <laughs> you're not going to like it. And Felicia's <laughs> going to have an attitude and we're all going to get along. So I, th- so with people like you guys who are just, you know, moving forward yeah. and uh, carrying the baton and just continuing, the future is bright. It's yeah. not as bad. I agree. There is a silver lining in this. Yeah. And congratulations to you and your family and you guys and your business. This is amazing. Fantastic. It's been an honor to have you here yes, today. Thank you so much. Yes. This has been yes. great. Are you, are, d- are you doing tours? Because I know you were here in the L.A. area talking about the book. Um, is this something that you're going to be we, doing? Can we, we get did, information we, to we where can we did meet it. you? We <laughs> did it. We did the tour. We did it. We did a New York tour because um, we wanted to not do a book tour because we wanted to take the content on tour. So mm. we actually did a physical space in New York last month mm-hmm. for a week um, where we presented the content every day and Smart. through events. But no, we're here in LA and then we're going to San Francisco and then I got to go get married actually. <gasps> oh. Yay! That's fantastic. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Some gonna brave man in. is going <laughs> to Bravo best. to him. Some Bravo. brave man. Can, are you in New York? Like can people follow you there? Yeah, and we're in New York. We're based more in New York. We do events in New York. Um, okay. and you can follow us on social at sustain and Honestly, like our our email and our book, the book, yeah. like there's so much to get involved with just That's through excellent. the brand. Well, Fantastic. thank you guys. Thank you for thank being you. here thank this you Monday for morning. Us. And we thank hope you Monday. guys, I'm sure you've been informed, educated, and entertained. Catch us next Monday here on LA Talk Radio. Have a, a great, great rest of the day. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Table for Five with Felicia and Annette only on L.A. Talk Radio.